Welcome to this video where we'll explain how to utilize realistic feed pattern data in your GRASP simulations. If and when realistic feed data are available, they should be applied to the analysis in GRASP and replace the idealized pattern that's often being used as a starting point. I'll show two approaches where the feed data are given either directly as measured cuts or as the coefficients of a spherical wave expansion. In both cases, it's assumed that the data are available in files that follow the format specification in GRASP. When we use the wizard to set up a reflector antenna geometry, it automatically selects a mathematical model for the feed, a Gaussian beam which resembles that of a corrugated horn. The default illumination is 12 dB at the edge of the reflector, or in this case the subreflector, as shown in the example here. Here's a model of a real corrugated horn that has been designed to provide the same 12 dB illumination table. We have the data available in two ways, first as direct measured data in cuts and next as spherical modes. I'll now demonstrate how this is being used. Here we have a project with a dual offset reflector with a Gaussian feed providing 12 dB of taper at approximately 8.5 degrees. The feed pattern and the resulting pattern from the dual reflector are shown next. The peak gain is 27 dBi for the feed and 52 dB for the entire antenna system. We'll now create a new source, a feed of the type tabulated pattern, which takes as input a file with the feed pattern data. We create an object of this class, specify a reference to the frequency object and to the coordinate system that defines the feed location. We then point to the file that contains the feed pattern data in cuts and select to copy this file into our project. All references to the Gaussian feed in the original commands are now replaced by tabulated pattern and a new job has been submitted. The pattern resembles the ideal ones with some deviations in the shape that are to be expected. However, the peaks are way off, 20 dB for the main beam and 17 for the feet. It's not uncommon that measured data are not normalized, but in GRASP they have to be normalized so the radiated pattern contains 4 pi watt in order for the final pattern to be given relative to isotropic level. And therefore there is the option of requesting a normalization of the feed data. When power normalization is set to on in the feed object, we can run the job again. And with the normalized data, we see a much better agreement. Though the main beam is still roughly about 1.5 dB off. The reason for this is most likely that the feed is not placed with its face center at the focal point. Fortunately, GRASP has a feature to calculate this. So first we deactivate the commands used to compute the pattern, and then we add a command, which is get face center. We point to the previously calculated tabulated feed cut and ask for the face center corresponding to the 12 dB beam width of the feed pattern. Then we execute this command and go to the results tab where we can find the face center info in the tree. This shows the best fit face center for both co- and cross-polar components at their minus 12 dB level relative to peak. In the case of the copolar, it's about 130 mm behind the aperture. To place the tabulated feet at the correct position, a new coordinate system is introduced, face center courses, using the current feed coordinate system as its base. A 
And next, we change the coordinate system reference in the feed object to point at this new system. This does not change anything to the geometry at the moment. But now we will push this coordinate system forward given the effect of placing the best fit face center at the focal point. With the feet placed at the correct position, we can repeat the entire pattern calculation to see if the expected improvements occur. The pattern shows an improvement of the dual reflector peak gain of almost half a dB. It's still not as high as with the ideal Gaussian beam, which of course cannot be expected. But the importance of placing the real feet at the correct location is clear. Still one thing needs to be further investigated. At the end of the job, there is a warning in the log file. A near field distance smaller than n divided by k has been requested. We'll explain this in the following slide. A spherical wave expansion expands a field in spherical modes as immutable and polar. And the more samples given in the input data, the more modes can be calculated. There is a relationship between the necessary maximum number of polar modes in the expansion of the feed field and the size of the feed R max. The measured feed data are more often than not oversampled and the spherical wave expansion is made accordingly with probably far too many modes. GRASP can only assume that the feed has a size corresponding to the sampling. This indicates that the feed is much larger than what is really the case, and it appears as if the feed extends beyond the reflector that is supposed to illuminate, as illustrated by the circles in the drawing. And a warning message informs that this is the case, and that only modes up to a certain number is included in the determination of the feed field. This message may occur both when input is measured data and when it's a spherical expansion. What to do then? In the results tab, locate the job of interest and open the additional job output. This is a fairly large file that we rarely study, but in this case we can search for azimuth to locate where the spherical wave expansion of the tabulated feed data is performed. We see the power in the azimuthal modes and the polar modes separately. First, the azimuthal modes show that all power is contained in m equal 1, indicating that the feed is rotationally symmetric. We then see the list of polar modes and can easily see that 99.9% .9 of the power is contained within the first 28 modes. And then it is of no importance if modes with n larger than 377 are neglected. Finally, we will very quickly show how a similar analysis could be conducted if the feed data were given as pre-calculated spherical wave expansion instead of tabulated field values. This is often the case if the feed has been measured in a spherical anechoic near field test facility. In this case, the spherical wave expansion has been normalized before they were provided to me, so I don't set the normalization to on. However, if unsure, I could of course have done so. All references to the feed in the command list are changed to the new tabulated SWE coefficients before we run the job again. So we go through each command involving a feed reference and change the reference. We're now able to submit the job. 
And as soon as it's completed, we'll switch to the results tab to inspect the final pattern. We see exactly the same pattern as before. And this is of course because the data came from exactly the same feed. Thank you for your attention.